I working in the, in the in the Italian part of the, the Switzerland. I did the, my wonderful fellowship with Dr. Ranje in Montreal uh, for one year. And uh, my field is knee surgery, reconstructive surgery, and sports surgery. Thank you, Matteo. And then the Professor uh, Giazit, he's from Greece. Uh, let's introduce yourself, Professor. Uh, good evening from Greece. Uh, I work in Patras University. I'm an associate professor here. And I'm a knee and trauma surgeon. And I'm doing shoulder as well. Thank you very much. So we got. Uh, for, we've got an hour to go. We're going to start. There's going to be three presentations. Matteo is going to start for uh, like a kind of a, it's, we're going to talk about acute total knee dislocation. And Matteo is going to just uh, tell us exactly what to do from the ER to the OR. I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, what, how do we use the large ligament in acute total knee dislocation. And John is going to talk about the results. So Matteo, go ahead. It's your turn. Thank you, Pierre, for the introduction. I will share uh, um, my my screen. I have to be. Uh, you have to, to permit me to uh, to sharing the the screen, Pauline. Okay. Yes. Voilà. Sir, wow. Very nice. So, uh, so uh, the presentation I will show you concerns the management of the knee dislocation before the surgery. This is the result of the experience I did in Montreal with my friend Pierre and that I couldn't do during my practice here in, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, knee dislocation is a rare but a severe event, not very common, but uh, half of this dislocation spontaneous reduced before arrival at the hospital. So it's very insidious. The causes may be high energy trauma, car accident or work accident, medium energy trauma, like in sports, and low energy trauma, like in obese people. And this is interesting because it represents a growing number of people. When we have the combination of several mechanisms, the result is done. This is a cause we operated in Montreal, a young girl, a little overheight, and the mechanism of knee in hyperextension during sports, a catastrophe for her knee. So why is it an interesting topic to talk about? Because there is a lot of to discuss, especially about the first care, the timing and the reconstruction. There are many classification, Kennedy based on the direction of the displacement of the tibia, the shank, the one we use, based on the number of rupture ligaments, and the boys guard, more complete, but also more complex. In any case, no classifications are predictive of treatment and prognosis. Let's talk about the associate injuries, very important in the management and for the timing for surgery. In more than half of cases, we have bone and chondra lesion. We can have soft tissue injuries like patellar tendon rupture, menisci, and the dreaded compartment syndrome, a real surgical emergency. Vascular lesions are not too rare. Here we speak about the popliteal uh, artery. Easy to understand, especially if we analyze the mechanism. With the hyperextension, we have the lesion of the intima. With the posterior dislocation of the tibia, we have the direct section of the artery, very dangerous. If we treat an artery injury within uh, eight hours, we have a good chance of saving the leg. Time is gold. It's very important to keep in mind. Another dangerous lesion is the lesion of the common parallel nerve to very close anatomical relationship uh, that limits uh, its movements and uh, precarious vascularization. And this is more probable if we have a virus stress mechanism. Unluckily, 
21 of cases show a total recovery, and this is very sad for our patient, especially after a, a, a important surgery. So uh, pay attention also to obese patient because they, they, they present a disturbing increased risk for this lesion. What do you do at, on uh, the emergency room? Uh, as you know, a knee dislocation is a frequent correlated with high energy trauma. So it's important to do firstly the ATLS procedure and we can check the knee during the second service. Pay attention to the spontaneous reduction. There are one in two. So the control of indirect signs is fundamental. If, it, if not reduced, do it. This is a natural rule in orthopedics. I know you know. And very, very important is the evaluation of the vascularity before and after the reduction as well. So the presence of the pulse is not indicative of the absence of vascular lesion, especially in young people. And the gold standard is the ankle brachial index. If it's more than 0 0.9, you have to do serial check, but if it's lower, you must to do vascular investigation, a call fast the vascular surgeon. Once again, time is gold. Uh, it's very important. Clearly it's important to do a careful neurological examination for sensitivity and for the motility. Particular attention to the compartment syndrome, always. And clearly the evaluation of all the ligaments is essential for diagnosis and operative planning. But it is, is often not possible in acute, very painful. But for example, if you have a recurvatum like that, probably, uh, this indicates a lesion of the PCL and uh, of the posterior lateral core. It's easy to have a greater feeling with the patient under narcosis, but unluckily we can uh, only do when the, we are already on the operating room. Here, uh, there's a lesion of uh, LCL, competence of MCL, by the way, this is Dr. Ranjay who did the examination at the surgery room. And distraction of the central pivot. Hmm. Radiological investigation are important to confirm your clinical diagnosis. The standard X-ray will show you the dislocation. The CT scan is useful for fracture and bone detachment. Obviously, MRI can show you the extent and the characteristic of uh, ligament injury. For the surgical treatment, we have two big stages. Firstly, the emergency surgery to do quick as possible. Then the definitive treatment with different strategies within three weeks, after three weeks, or two-step surgery. There is no place for conservative treatment in this pathology. For the emergency surgery, we have vascular lesions, open dislocation with or without fracture, compartment syndrome, and where it's difficult to maintain the reduction like in obese patient and polytrauma. Uh, the fix X is the temporary solution in these cases. Fast to do and very effective. For definitive surgery, the first three weeks are good timing to operate and it's more easy and we have better functional results for all anatomical structure, bones, tendons, and ligament. Don't underestimate the scar. The scar can be a big enemy during your surgery. For example, this is uh, the reconstruction of a posterior lateral ligament, a posterior lateral corner 10 days after the trauma. It's easy to spot the layers and to isolate the structure. It is not the same after four weeks. The subcutaneous tissues is full of scar and from some uh, structure like the nerve, for example, is very challenging. So 
Early surgery is the choice of our school. This is our philosophy for this kind of surgery. Another cornerstone of our school is the open surgery. For us, this is better because avoid unpleasant complication because the capsule is not yet healed and the exposure is more comfortable for the surgery as well. If you choose a one stage the surgery, you can use arthroscopy with more security, but you have to pay attention to the possible deformities of the knee due to the scar. If you choose delayed surgery, normally the extraarticular structure are operated first, then interarticular structure. So in conclusion, the purse to take home great attention to spontaneous knee reduction, especially in obese patients. A fast treatment on associated vascular lesion can make the difference. At last, the suggestion for our school, plan an early, definitive, open surgery. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pierre, for all. Thank you very much, Matteo. All right, so this is the first talk. Um, we're going to just keep your questions for the end. We're going to have about for 15, maybe he took about 10 minutes. So hopefully we'll go into, uh, into our time and be able to get some more questions. So I'll go for the, uh, how do we treat those kinds of patients? What is the, what is the solution? So Pauline, can I just share my, my slides, please? First slide, it's something very nice. It's Montreal. By that time, it's a fall. So leaves are red, orange, and yellow. So uh, first slide is Montreal right now. I want to show it to you because it's very nice. If it's you, don't, you don't have your PPT presentation? Ah, all right, I got because it. Because you can, uh, yes, you can share your screen. Yes. Okay, you can share my, I can share my screen. Okay. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, okay. Yes, it's coming. I'm sorry, I thought, okay, perfect. I got it. We'll come back. I'll get that here. And this is Montreal. Look, it's very nice, nice colors. So I want to share that with you. It's uh, not very scientific, but it's very nice. So we're going to be talking about uh, the role of artificial ligaments in management of knee ligament injuries, especially in acute total knee dislocation. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Those x-rays should never be done, but it was done because it was not reduced, like Matteo told us. So uh, we got a, we got a big series where I do my uh, we're going to give you the numbers. So we've done we've done quite a lot. So like Matteo said, it's a very uncommon injury, great damage damage to soft tissues, and there could be some other uh, nerve injuries, but still, and it's a catastrophe when you got those patients. So uh, like uh, Matteo said, uh, timing is very important to get the surgery done. It's e much easier if you do it within two weeks. If it's done later than two weeks, I think that if, you, if the patient's got an external fixator, it's gonna be even harder to go on the lateral side. The most important thing is on the lateral side. So if the patient is immobilized, lateral side will be very hard to get into and uh, to recognize everything. So, uh, all right, thank you, perfect. And uh, so it's... Has to be done. Dr. Ranger, I'm going to interrupt you because we can't see your slide. So it might be better if we can pause in a... All right. Then Jonathan's going to tell me what to do. All right. All right. All right. So you see me now? No? Where's your screen? Share screen. We don't have a screen. All right. All right. Okay. Now you see me, eh? All right. I'm going to please. Yes. Perfect. All right. A little bit bigger. So that, that works, Sylvia? Yes. Perfect. Yes. All right. So timing is important. I think you have to do it as soon as you can. So two weeks is good. If you've got more than two weeks and the patient is an external fixator, you can have a hard time going in the lateral side. 
and uh, everything as everything has to be reconstructed it's up to you in my mind i think everything should be done but what we're afraid of is uh, getting the patient very stiff arterial fibrosis that happens so what is the principle of treatment of those patients i mean we all do trauma so in trauma we said we have to open reduction and internal fixation so what is the plan is we have to reduce the knee just do everything that you can to repair all the all the ligaments and the blade will be the large ligament so doing that it gives you first of all the potential of some different structures to heal especially pcl and the structure the structure extra articular and you can mobilize those patients very very fast because the large will serve as a blade and you can put the patients with full range of motion and in my definition for an acute knee dislocation you need at least to get both cruciate, cruciate torn if there's one cruciate that is uh, left alone and it's not broken it's not the, there's not tear it's not for me an acute total knee dislocation so all the patients that we did that we done they were all acute total knee dislocation with both cruciate so if we talked about artificial ligament, there's a long story. You've seen them all, uh, carbon fiber, Gore-Tex, Dacron, they all have a lot of disadvantages, the synovitis when they break, everything. But now we got something that has been, I've been using it for 30 years, and it's the large ligament advanced reinforcement system. And we use it as an internal brace, like a blade. And uh, using it this way, it's uh, you reduce, you fix with the, the LARS and you mobilize the patient. And the LARS will, will help you to uh, get some scaffolding of collagen tissues to get a good result. So at the trauma center that I'm working with at Sacrica in between June 96 to March 2014, we had 199 total acute knee dislocation. So it's quite a big number. Since then, we got more than 300 now. And uh, why is it so big numbers? Because in Canada, it's uh, in Montreal or Quebec, it's, uh, you know, like uh, everybody send the patients that don't want to take care of those. And that's why I got that big uh, population of uh, total acute knee dislocation. We had the possibility of revising 107 with the follow up more than two years. And they, some patients were excluded. I had five or six bilateral total knee dislocation. This is very uh, bad injury. Uh, there was some patients were taken as a, uh, uh, an acute, but it was more than three weeks. So I just eliminated those patients. And there were some patients that were changed in the total knee prosthesis. So they were eliminated. There was, uh, we had to patients at least to get two years uh, follow-up. And there's some patients that were lost to follow-up. So this is the number of patients that we got 107. So management is like Matteo said, I won't go back on that. And uh, this is very important, intensive rehab protocol after the surgery. So that's about what it looks like. If you wanna just repair everything, you have to open it. If you don't open, you cannot repair. And so I do repair everything. Do repair PCL, both bundles, do repair ACL, do repair MCL, and I do repair on the lateral side, up this tendon and collateral ligament. So everything is done and we do repair everything. And once everything is repaired, like you can see, we just drill holes and uh, we just slide uh, artificial ligament for PCL, like two bundles, ACL one, and a puzzle a corner, depending if you do both, it could be uh, two bundles with the L collateral ligament and pop -titus. And before, at the beginning, I was not doing anything on MCL. I was just repair and assess MCL heals most of the time, but in a total knee dislocation, MCL needs, uh, needs uh, something to, to hold it in place because it, they were loose at the beginning. So at the end, like you see on the, on the screen on the left, there's no, we don't see any artificial ligament. We don't see on the left because they're all lost in their own ligaments. So ligaments, the artificial ligament doesn't show. They're within collagen fibers. Like, for me, PCL is two bundle, anterolateral and posterolateral medial. And uh, at the beginning, I started doing one bundle because of 
total media location, but I just chose and I changed very fast to do two bundles. Very brief because John's going to let us know about results, but uh, there was a lot, a lot of associated injuries. Master Lab uh, 17, it's exactly like what you said, uh, Matteo. Uh, there was a uh, Master Lab, there was a parallel nerve in 20%. There was ministers there were very, very often. There were a lot of fractures associated. So it's a very bad injury. They were all evaluated using the Lysum, the Tignan, the Mayav, and the ITDC. They were all evaluated by different people and by the same, the same person, but it was not me. And first thing, how about the range of motion? Listen, I was very surprised. Range of motion was not bad at all. Some patients had to get arterial leases because they were a bit stiff. And they were, uh, I was using a lot of Dynast Plin that helped me a lot to get full extension. So uh, flexion, um, the mean is 125 and 21, extension minus two. So it's, uh, very bad. it's not very bad, it's a very good range of motion. So patients were very satisfied. And uh, when you just want to know if they're stable or not, if you use the uh, TILA, I mean, first of all, the uh, TT1000 is good for ECL, but TT1000 is not good at all for PCL, is a big difference. So I did evaluate everybody with TILA, anterior and posterior, and there was a big difference, not in the ACL, but a very big difference in PCL. So the knee laxity, the uh, Lachman, everything was evaluated, Valgus virus, uh, everything in dial test. So, and, and valgus virus was at zero and 30 degrees. And uh, there was some swelling when we saw those patients. It's a big trauma. So cartilage is uh, damaged. And we got some arthritis uh, in the long run for a couple of patients. And what about rupture? All right, this is a rupture of the ACL. This is another one. And I've done quite a lot of LARS. When you do have a rupture, there's going to be no synovitis. Whatever people say, I've been using it for 30 years, just not using that all the time. But for the total knee dislocation, different patients, I do use it. Never had any synovitis related to the LARS. Complications, big surgery, big complications. Arthrolysis, 18, arthrosis. The patients now more and more are getting their prosthesis done. It's uh, down the road after 25 years, they got some arthritis. Even though if I got, I give them um, endocyte, they got some interotopic classification. There was compartment syndrome. ACL was revised a couple of times because I put more emphasis on, on, on the PCL than on the ACL because I know how to do an ACL in a chronic case. And uh, there was some infection, not that bad. So laxity were evaluated. Like I said before, PCL should be evaluated by Taylor. And one good point is patients were in a good, most of them good knee functional, they were functional. And if we go, we had 40, 54 patients that had, a, uh, we did saw those patients at four years and at nine years, I'm sorry, nine years first, and we saw them back five years later. And they were all, they're, they're, I mean, the result that we got at two years, that will be the result we'll get for the rest of their life. Most of the time, if they're stable at two years, they're gonna be stable at four and at nine, they won't change. So is there a place for artificial ligament in knee surgery? Yes, but if the surgery is done with caution because there's no elongation, it has to be put at the right place. If we choose the right patient, if we got the right indication, and if we do, and, and if we perform the surgery the, perfectly. So conclusion, we find that objective and subjective evaluations results were good when looking to the last follow-up in time. And trial analysis, of patients and follow up in four and nine years, they were stable with time. So I think that more and more patients have to be put on those uh, in those statistics to get the big numbers. So that's what I had to say about uh, LARS and uh, acute total dislocation. So we'll go right away, and that's good, right on time. Uh, we're gonna go and ask John uh, from Greece to give us a result, what he got uh, on total knee dislocation and PCL. Thank you very much. Questions, keep your questions for the end. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
I'm going to repeat a few words from Pierre's presentation. The major stabilizer of the knee is PCL ACL, the two lateral uh, complex, medial and lateral, and the two complexes, medial and lateral. Definition this location is two uh, cruciate ligaments plus one uh, collateral. They're uh, at least grade three. We are dealing with these things. 25 years ago, we said not to operate. And uh, dislocation, PCL based multiple ligament injuries are often part of a multi system injury complex involving knee ligament. That comes from Greg Fanelli. Uh, the effort should be to uh, repair everything, both ACL and lateral ligaments. In my practice, uh, I don't know if you can see the uh, videos, uh, I try to repair everything uh, at once, uh, but uh, I do it uh, arthroscopically, especially except of the lateral complex. So I use the uh, large uh, system to repair the PCL. I always uh, reconstruct one bundle uh, because uh, I always operate in acute stage. So uh, it, it, I found uh, the knee very stable after the arthroscopically assisted uh, one uh, bundle reconstruction of the PCL. Uh, you see here the technique. We have to be very careful uh, and to check uh, radiographically very often to avoid this complication is very close to the popliteal artery and to the popliteal nerve. And uh, this is uh, the view after uh, both ligament reconstructions with uh, artificial large ligament. Now, to be honest, I don't use artificial ligament for uh, ACL, but I use the augmentation system for uh, ACL. I still use the large ligament for posterior or PCL. Here, it's a case uh, two, weeks after, uh, two weeks after the operation, uh, arthroscopically assisted, uh, both ACL and PCL and medial uh, complex, uh, full, almost full range of motion from the beginning because uh, uh, I did it arthroscopically and uh, the patient went very well. Uh, in chronic injuries, obviously, uh, I don't use only PCL uh, large ligament, but uh, some, in some uh, cases, I use it as a stabilizer to protect my graft. Usually, I use an autograft or allograft, mainly autograft. The, the bad thing is the PLRI complex. You see the dial test in chronic cases. And here is the virus thrust, uh, the typical virus thrust uh, of the patient, but again in chronic cases. Uh, this is uh, my work I did in England, uh, compared the various uh, techniques, Larson, Warren, and uh, uh, Laboreau at that time. And uh, we found that the Warren technique is quite effective. I, I used to operate. Uh, uh, although the literature doesn't give any advantage to any of them, but in my experience, I found uh, very useful the tibial tunnel to reconstruct both tibial and peroneal uh, attachment of the PC of the PLC. Always we identify the peroneal nerve. We have to identify this, and you see these uh, uh, structures. In acute cases, you can recognize some structures. We can partially repair. And here, I used to augment in acute cases the large Y ligament, which we uh, designed back to 2004, uh, based on our research in uh, PLRI. So I use uh, one uh, branch to the femur and one branch for the tibial tunnel and one branch for the a fibular tunnel, uh, two bundles of the, AC, of the PCL, obviously. Uh, this is the case in theater. In most, uh, this is a chronic case, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to pass it a little bit. And you sometimes we check stress X-rays 
again when we have the opportunity to do it we check all our cases with the pilos device and here's the PA, the mri to be honest i don't based on mri findings it's very confused uh, i get some informations but uh, i rely mainly on the clinical examination to be honest when we operate i always operate acutely when we i we mean acutely two or three weeks I all the, our patients are uh, in the hospital having aggressive physiotherapy. You see here two days after the operation, and here you can see uh, almost full range of movements. We operate only when we get at this stage. Uh, if we operate uh, acutely, in I mean in two or three days when we have. Uh, uh, the inflammation stage, we may have uh, arthrofibrosis. So we we provide the uh, aggressive physio, and then when we get a good uh, range of movement, then we operate arthroscopically assisted. And uh, now the recent the recent uh, evidence is that we should operate uh, acutely. Although I do it since two thousand. Uh, some people uh, like Pierre prefer to reconstruct both bundles, uh, some other uh, one bundle. I'm, I follow the one bundle reconstruction because it's a little bit tricky to do it arthroscopically, do bundles um, and take some time. And I didn't find in my uh, experience any difference. Uh, always we tense uh, the PCL first. And here sometimes some people use this uh, safety uh, incision. I don't use it, uh, this safety incision, because the large system, the system is quite effective. And I don't use the posteromedial corner, uh, portal, except for chronic cases. You don't need in acute cases, and it's very difficult because the fluids going through there in acute cases, they may create combustion syndrome. Therefore, I never use tunica in these cases. Uh, Sometimes we have obese patients, and this is a problem. Um, in these cases, I reconstruct uh, PCL and the LCL uh, with a large ligament PCL and with autograft ACL, and uh, I reconstruct with open technique the lateral complex. Uh, it's a tricky case, and sometimes these patients have uh, vascular problems. But the difference is when we have patients with vascular problems need, needing open, excuse me, needing open repair. In these cases, in most of the cases, uh, we have to put X fix to protect the repair. We have to open the fascia, and the vascular surgeons have to reconstruct the uh, artery. And in this case, we have a lot for fire arthrofibrosis. We that, that's the problem with the various uh, papers. They should exclude these cases because they have a worse prognosis than the other cases. Here is our long-term results. Uh, it's about 40 patients, but we have over 200 now. Uh, uh, but this is with a, a follow-up from 10 to 20 years. And uh, this is published to World Journal of Orthopedic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, here is the, 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 uh, the results. Uh, IKDC, the main IKDC is almost 80%. Uh, Lysome score uh, is very good. And uh, we have only one patient with uh, osteoarthritis. Actually, I had one more recently. <laughs> but now it's 25 years follow-up. So we have very low incidence of, oste of osteoarthritis and uh, very good subjective results. So uh, the issue is to repair all the injury structures. Uh, it's better to repair arthroscopically if we can uh, and to repair early than late. Despite that, we have to know that it's difficult to restore a normal knee long-term. And where we are going to the future to diminish post-traumatic arthrosis, and how we, can we achieve that, improving our surgical techniques, the graft types, and the 
to more accurately uh, restore the normal biomechanics. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. That was very good. Thank you very much. So listen, there's a way for you to get questions. If you want to get to the question, there's a questions and answer. So you can type uh, your questions and you got it and go on, go on. I mean, it's your turn. We got about 25 minutes to go. So we got plenty of time. So that, uh, that the, it's the first question. In your experience using large ligament to perform ACL reconstruction arthroscopically, do you use the same instrumentation as if you would use an autograph to replace the ACL arthroscopically? Uh, maybe Matteo can say something on that? Yes, sure. Uh, I think uh, that uh, with the, the, the last uh, instrument, we have uh, some advantages because as you showed, there's uh, some git can, uh, that you protect you when you do this arthroscopically or also, uh, also in open, but uh, uh, you have a, um, a supplement protection uh, with the posterior structure. So this is not the same with the, the standard uh, instrumentation you can find for the, the normal, uh, normal ACL reconstruction normally. This is a big advantage, I think. How about you, John? Uh, I don't know if I understood the question very well. Did they say if I use another instrumentation for PCL when I do it arthroscopically? It was, it was ACL, not PCL, I'm sorry. If you use the, if you do an ACL with a large, would you use the same instrument as if you were doing a, a, a ACL with the autograph? Yeah, yeah. Or I your use holes a, and everything. ACL is easy. I use uh, because uh, when I use ACL, I don't use the uh, large uh, system. The I use the augmentation. I mean the loop. So I use a button. So I use the, the any system for ACL. I don't mind bother. Regarding PCL, I use always the large system. I mean, uh, for the large system for PCL, I think it's if, the, if someone didn't see, never saw that system, it's very well done. Uh, it's uh, it could be dangerous, but if you do it very slowly, you don't have to open in the back. The guide is very it works very good, and uh, it, it's very it's much it makes things much easier with PCL on my side for ACL. I don't put the, uh, my, my holes at the same place at all. When I do an ACL, like bone, that's a tendon bone, what I do the most, I go real posterior because I want my knee to be tight in extension. So I do my holes more posterior, knowing that uh, that structure is going to elongate it a little bit. And that is not the case for the Lars. If you put the Lars and you would go too much posterior, you might have troubles to get full extension, depending how much you're going to tight it. So uh, I do different things for ACL if I use a large or if I use the uh, autograph, a bone pellet tendon or whatever, semitendinosis and dresses, whatever you use, breast, or quadriceps tendon. Other questions? Are there any questions about, uh, my, John, I was just a little bit surprised because you do everything by scope. Uh, and, and were you, have you had any compartment syndrome using it uh, at two weeks? And do you, are you able to repair, like sometimes we see that the PCL is gone from very, very, from proximal, and it's a big, big, huge stump. And uh, I just want to see that it's got very lucky that I'm there and I'll be able to put it back into place. So if you do it by scope, how can you do those things and be able to save those PCL? Right, uh, that's a very good, thank you for the question, very nice. Very interesting. Uh, last week I had a case like that. It was uh, quite big stump detached from the tibia. And uh, when I do it arthroscopically, I never use a tunica. I do a lot of dry arthroscopy. Oh. And in mm -hmm. dry arthroscopy, uh, I try to avoid the fluids, a lot of fluids. I disconnect the fluids. I always check the posterior, the calf, not to have a uh, pressure there, 
And uh, if you do it in two weeks' time, in most of the case, and you, if you are careful, in most of the cases, you don't have a problem. But you have to be careful. Regarding the stump, I use the shoulder system to pass two tapes through the stump, and I pass with my graft, with my large graft, so I have the stump plus the internal uh, brace, and it's quite useful, this thing. So Sorry. I pass the same hole, the, uh, the sutures, uh, from the stump, which I have passed with uh, the shoulder system, the shoulder penetrator, and I pass through the same hole, and I tie it over, uh, over a staple. Sorry. Sorry. And are you doing something special for, like you had one, maybe you got more than one, big obese patient. Is there something obese. particular <laughs> that, that should be done? And those are hard. Unfortunately, we have uh, a lot of obese patients in Greece, <laughs> recently, to be honest. And uh, in some of these cases, they had vascular injuries. Uh, thanks go uh, fortunately the our vascular surgeon uh, deal with them with the internal with stents and they did the head to open two or three cases and we had a few more obese patients around 15 patients no more but in all these cases we treat them arthroscopically the the cruciate ligaments and in some cases i had to open the lateral side i know that i never opened the medial side but in one case recently I had a failure in the medial side in an obese patient, I did, and I had to reconstruct in a late stage using the uh, lapra technique with uh, the allograft. Repair sides of MCL and for a POL. All right, Matteo, can you tell us a little bit of, a bit more about MCL? I mean, I, I, in my hands, I had bad results with, if I was not doing any MCL and in obese patients, most of the time, they're a little bit in valgus, you know, they have big legs. I mean, the phenotype is valgus. So I said, if you don't put anything on the medial side, do you think that will hold? What do you think, Mathieu? Uh, MCL, <laughs> this is a good question because MCL is uh, uh, often, uh, um, and, uh, there are also uh, injuries, uh, especially in, uh, in uh, obese people. No, it is uh, a rising uh, uh, kind of, of patient. But uh, we know normally, normally uh, MCL had a, a, a good healing capacity. Uh, so, uh, uh, but if you have like a pull up, you can try to fix it uh, with uh, a big graph, for example. Uh, modern techniques are with anchors, for example. But uh, it's true. If we have also a um, bulgous uh, access problem, maybe maybe you can plan. But this is a, a so big surgery, a correction of the of the valgus. But uh, this is a, a big topic to speak about because you have to delay uh, the surgery. Uh, now you have firstly to do the, the osteotomy and then the reconstruction of the ligament. Uh, so uh, it's a really uh, big knee surgery. But uh, normally in, um, in a large part of cases, uh, we, can, uh, we can repair or... Uh, uh, do a reinsertion of the of the ligament because this is the characteristic of this kind of lesion. So uh, I saw uh, a lot of uh, good results, for example, with the fixation distally with some uh, some uh, staples. Some, um, but uh, and I think the the, the the suture with the anchors is uh, is not so strong as mm -hmm. uh, surgery uh, technique. I don't know but if you. Professor Gliatis, you have uh, another experience about this, uh, this kind of surgery in, uh, in medial ligament? You're right. Uh, you should never rely on the sutures. To, as I said, uh, very rarely I repair the medial side uh, because I use a brace. After I repair cruciate and, lat and lateral side and ACL, uh, usually put a brace. In most of the cases, the knee are stable. I had in this case, I show you in 40 cases with 20 years follow up, there are about uh, six patients with MCL. And uh, we didn't have long term problems. 
I had one problem with, uh, as I said before, with an obese patient. In this case, I did reconstruction in a late stage with uh, the technique, uh, with augmentation, with allograft. Or you can, you can do with uh, hamsticks as well, whatever you like. Sorry. Is there a question from uh, the audience? Is there someone who wants to ask questions about uh, whatever is in your head? ACL, PCL, there's uh, two questions here. So let's go and get those two. All right. All right, Dr. Avnaji, which is the status of your knees with large ligament after um, almost 29 years? Uh, is that 20? Yeah, 1996. What I just said before, uh, the trouble that I got is uh, most of the time, um, arthritis in the future. John says that if you do the surgery right, you might not have those kinds of troubles in the future. But I think that the, the arthritis that comes at uh, 15 to 20 years it's because of the trauma that they, they sustain uh, during the, the injury. And uh, there's some cartilage damage that happened. And I would say, uh, I, I mean, if they're stable in two years and 20 years, they'll still be stable, but they will start, start to getting some arthritis. I did revise right now. There was two patients that they revised when I did the revision of those patients in 2014. Now, now I've got at least 10. And it's going to grow and the grow mate. If, if I give them 25 years with their knees, I think it's not a bad thing and, and, and they're very happy. And um, this is the first question. I think, uh, does, uh, does that answer the question? There's another question coming from Fernando. All right. This is a fellow of, of us in Montreal, too. Salut, Dr. Roger, Mathieu, and Dr. John. It's me, Fernando from Brazil. He spent a year and we had a good time with Fernando. I'd like to know your opinion about acute knee dislocation with, wow, patella tendon avulsion. Very happy to see you all. All right, John, good question. <laughs> what do you think? I was going to ask you the question, but uh, Matteo or John, start and Matteo, get ready. It's going to go on you after that. If you got a patella tendon avulsion, John. Uh, to be honest, I never had a case like that. I, didn't, I never dealt with a case like that. So, uh, but uh, I presume I should repair the tendon extraarticular and do the same in the articulary. The okay. problem is, in this case, you have to immobilize afterwards or to put a protective wire. I, I, did, I never dealt with a case like that, to be honest. All right. Matteo, have you heard about that? You've seen this some, is some with me, eh? It's very interesting, Louis, uh, because uh, something you can, you can, uh, cities and uh, this is uh, skip uh, more complex your surgery if uh, if uh, you have a, an avulsion with a, a, um, a so quite big um, uh, bone uh, detachment you can fix it with a with a screw for example but if you have a complete peeling off of the tendon this is more challenging you can uh, also use the the same uh, concept of the hybrid technique of uh, ligament reconstruction, for example, using, uh, for example, the LARS, but, but always with the patellar tendon. So uh, you protect with the LARS, for example, the, uh, the, 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 the healing of the, um, the, the, the ligament. And there are a lot of uh, combination of, uh, of fixation of this, this ligament. Um, there's some, uh, uh, some um, um, artificial ligament that are still uh, played open it, but you, uh, you have also an interesting technique with the two ligament. You can fix it in the, in the patella directly and fix then in the on the side of uh, a tibial tuberosity with some screws. This is uh, I, I think very 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 effective. As, uh, you have a strong. Uh, uh, fixation, you can um, um, you, you 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 can permit the the healing of the tendon, and uh, you have uh, the reconstruction of the extend uh, um, the extend system of the knee directly. So you can start also the physiotherapy as well, uh, relative uh, relatively fast. I totally agree with you, Matteo, and uh, I've done. I think I've got maybe five or, or six patients with uh, avulsion of their fetal tendon uh, associated with the acute total knee uh, dislocation. And 
the most of the time the patella is riding very high so you know like it's very hard to do everything so the only way to do it it's like uh, Matteo said you there's a, a life that is called pt30 you drive two holes you use two you drive two holes in the patella and then uh, you get that uh, w with a, a, a um, 4.5 uh, millimeters mesh and you go through the patella bring it down so you just have to pull on the tendon on the lark and you have to choose the right place not to have a patella baja you fix it and once it's fixed you just have to repair your tendon and you don't have a, a, you don't have any a, any uh, tension on your sutures because it has been held by the the lark ligament so uh for sure those patients uh are a little bit more stiff, but I do use a full range of motion. I don't stop them to doing full range of motion to get the, them uh, try to get, but they're more stiff. It's very rare that we got those patients with over 105, 110 knee uh, flexion after uh, everything is done. So uh, I think that has to be done and this is very something easy to do. The question that I had, I'm sorry, but someone asked, knows about me. He says the question referring to your own knee therapy 20 or 29 years ago. He's right. I was, uh, I had a, uh, I had a knee injury, a couple of these injuries, by the way. And I had one, uh, like a laboral came in Montreal and put me a large, uh, but I still do, I did so many uh, things that uh, I broke it. And now I got a, a, a a uni prosthesis in my in my knee that was uh, I had another I got a couple of surgery but I got a total knee uh, a, a half knee a uni on that knee that was a, a question asking to that they asked me personally I didn't know that all right so other questions for the audience about uh, anything I mean that questions on the patellar uh, avulsion is a great one and, uh, and and there was a lot of people that got fracture of the tibial fracture plateau and this is something that has to be addressed too at the same time so it makes a very big surgery sometimes it takes long and uh, but I think that every, everything should be done and you need to get someone to help you out if you got a fellow this is great if you don't it makes things very very hard to work with um, I don't know if there's some other questions on the, the use of Lars in my uh, in my opinion Lars should never be used as a replacement for a ligament. Never, ever. It's uh, an internal brace. It's something that has to be used uh, with collagen fibers. If you don't have collagen fibers, it's going gonna, it's gonna to break. And I think that the ligament has had a bad uh, reputation because they were not used right. And in states, you're not allowed to do any artificial ligament, but Something has to be said, did the ligament fail or did we fail the ligament? So I think that uh, it, uh, in States, everybody was doing large because it was our, it was not large at that time, it was artificial ligament. It was easier, it has no harvest of anything. So the one who was not very uh, good in knees was doing knees with uh, artificial ligament. And that's why I think that uh, we, uh, it's our technique that says that, uh, we might have lost artificial ligaments because they were not used right. So if we do use right and the good indication, artificial ligament helps us a lot for different indications. So there's another question here. Why can't we use only the large in the ACL? Uh, I don't know about that question. Is that question is in a, a chronic case? I could say that if it's in a chronic case, uh, I don't use the large in the chronic ACL. Um, I think that uh, there's no more, it depends, but if there's no more collagen fibers and you do put the lars and it's totally by itself in the, in the notch, it's going to break. Two, I would say three to five years, it's going to break. And people will say, this is not a good ligament, but it's not, the, it's not gonna, it wasn't used right, the right way. And um, I think that those patients need to get collagen fibers. Mine was done for an ACL, but uh, it was an acute case, and uh, he was able to repair, and he was able to get that ligament up, drain a hole, and do the, the large. I did my son. He's nine, he was 19, 18. He's 35 now, so it's uh, 20 years ago, about. 
He's uh, two meters. He weighs 100 kilos. He does a lot of sports. And he still got his uh, ACL with the large in his knees, what's done in the queue. So if it's done right with the right indication, and uh, could be it could be for a long time. All right. Is there any other question? What time is it right now? So we got five minutes left. So we're not bad at all. Uh, question and réponse. Is there? It could be done in French too. So the the gens de France, vous pouvez me parler en français. J'ai un petit peu de d'expérience en français. Two questions. All right. What is your surgical experience? You need this location for unique. Okay. This is questions that are asked for you. So it would be good if uh, you can answer those questions. It's a sondage that, we've, that we're doing. So there's a, uh, all right, it's starting to answer. All right, I'm a beginner. I don't have a lot of experience. I'm experienced part of my surgery routine. I'm experienced, but not part of my surgical routine. All right, just seven person answer and we're 150 that registered for that webinar. So we want to hear from you guys, please. 10, come on, don't be shy, go ahead. Help us to see uh, who we were talking to. There were 150 patients, a patient, I'm sorry, <laughs> doctors that were present, doctors or whoever. Fernando, did you answer? <laughs> All right. So, and the other question, have you ever used LARS for knee dislocation treatment? So yes. I would say 35 percent, 33. No, 76, 67. I'm sorry. It's a, it's sometimes when you got when you got one total knee dislocation, you got quite a lot, enough, a lot of autograph to to use. But when you got both knees, you're in trouble. Some uh, country could not use uh, allograph. Um, in our country, we can use both allograph and um, artificial ligament, the LARS. So depending, uh, I'm using quite a lot of, uh, of LARS depending more, most of the time in the acute total knee dislocation. All right, so uh, this uh, two questions, there were 18 that answered only, 30% uh, answered the question. All right, uh, is there another, uh, is there another, other, I'm sorry, is there any other questions, uh, uh, Sylvia or um, Pauline? Uh, is there any questions? When it I comes see, to double, yes, um, a general, I see a general question. When it comes to do bad PCA reconstruction with PCA ligament, we test on first, and why is that important? That's a question to all. All right. What I, I think that question is uh, belongs to me because you just use one ligament. I do use uh, in my hand. I put the uh, anterolateral bundle put my knee in 90 degrees and I just bring back the tibia underneath the femur because that has to be the first thing to do. The tibia has to be reduced underneath. Sometimes when you don't have an ECL, so you have to find uh, the right spot to bring it forward, not too much forward because uh, you use the step of sign. When I do have uh, both, I mean, uh, a knee with both ligaments, ACL, PCL, before I just put my drapes, I just uh, check the, the uh, step off sign on the normal knee. And then I got it in my fingers. And then when I just bring it forward, I just put, I tense the, uh, put tension on the anterolateral ligament at 90 degrees, bring it forward, fix it. And then I put my knee in about 30 degrees and I don't pull that hard. Uh, less than uh, the anterolateral uh, on posterior medial, put the knee in uh, 30 degrees and I just put tension on that one. And after I do the uh, collaterals on both sides, because if you do it before, the knee will be posterior, the tibia will be posterior and you don't, you won't have the right place to put your ligament, uh, uh, either uh, MCL or, L, uh, or collateral ligament on the lateral side. So that's the way I'm doing it when I got both. PCL first and uh, anterolateral first at 90 degrees. Other questions? Is there some other questions? I think it's we, it's about all. It's a uh, perfect, three, it's a one o'clock, I'm sorry. It's uh, about, it's uh, we, I'm in Montreal. So it's about two o'clock for me. It's about eight o'clock for you. Yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, 
we are going to we're planning to do different things. Uh, that would be nice if we can know exactly what you would like to to hear about in uh, in, in Lars. I do quite a lot Lars in extra articular uh, indications, and uh, but you know like everything could be talked about, and uh, I think it would be nice if eventually you tell us exactly what you want to hear about uh, artificial ligaments when should be used and why and uh, the indication. So hopefully that you enjoyed it. Thank you for the last company to uh, let us uh, talk. Thank you, Matteo. J'ai hâte de te revoir, Matteo. Thank you, John, for your presence. And uh, hopefully that you enjoyed it and uh, will be part of the next uh, webinar eventually in a couple of months. Bye, Thank everyone. you, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre, for the moderation and for uh, sharing your experience with, uh, with us. It was a really pleasure. I think we can organize uh, some uh, some more uh, webinar because the topic is very interesting uh, on this uh, on this topic about the complex uh, new surgery. Uh, I know there's also uh, the knee dislocation study group in the US. This is very interesting uh, as the study group. Uh, there's some uh, some people from Mayo Clinic. And, uh, uh, but uh, we, qu we can also discuss in next topics, for example, uh, these results uh, with uh, also our uh, global experience. You're from Canada, John from Greek, me from Switzerland. It's very, it's very interesting. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Sylvia and Pauline. Uh, see you next, uh, next time. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And I hope we get another opportunity to have a webinar.